Hello. It's been an interesting day. By interesting, I mean lazy. It's 3 p.m. and I've done almost nothing. But I just got a delivery from Ups, the good old UPS guy. I was dropped off a black box. All throughout college, I kept an eye on the, all the different subscription boxes because it was something I've always wanted to do, but I wanted to find a box that had stuff I would use and books I would read. I discovered that I really liked Fairy Loot. This is a subscription service. I think it's based out of the UK, but it is all fantasy books. Last year, they did a bunch of boxes that were my favorite books. So they did Sorcery of Thorns, they did Serpent and Dove, The Beautiful, and just a handful of other books that I either loved or they're on my top priority TBR. So their record of what books they've sent out in their boxes, I'm just really impressed with. And so I was like, I think that's the box I'm gonna try. So I ordered from them. Coincidentally, right after I ordered, they emailed me and said, hey, do you want some free boxes? And I went, I already paid for them. I love your boxes, so I'm looking forward to it. And they've offered to refund me for three months of my six month subscription, which was totally unnecessary, but like automatic brownie points for that. So I'm already like in love with this company. So this is, I think the November or December box. I can't remember. I'm just gonna unbox it and see all the goodies inside. And I'm gonna try and maintain that I bought this, even though I know they refunded it, but I'm gonna try and be as honest as possible. So let's see, ooh, what is that? See, this whole box is just so beautiful. I love her. So this box is called Defying the Odds. And the first thing I see are these socks that are inspired by The Wrath and the Dawn. I actually think those are so cute. I'm gonna have to see if these even fit me because I have hooves, but I like these. I've read this book, but I listened to it on audiobook in like 2015. So I don't remember tons and I have to reread it just to see like, is it a great book I missed out on? But that's so clever. Like I like to judge book boxes based on, is it low hanging fruit? Did you just give me like a bookmark? So I think this is really inventive and I like this pattern. So I think we'll get some use out of those. Next is a pouch. Oh, okay, so this is from Pierce Brown. I have not read this series yet. I think that's the Red Rising. It's on my wish list, so I have no idea what this means, but it's like a little faux leather zipper pouch. Ooh, and it's nice and lined inside, so it's really good quality. But this is for Golden Sun, which is the fourth book in a series. I might pass this on to one of my friends who's read this, I don't know. Magnetic bookmarks inspired by Skyward. Okay, I just got this book for Christmas. Again, have not read it, but it might have been in a past box of theirs, or I don't know. I like that they're not sticking to just like Throne of Glass, Harry Potter, <laughs> like the generic series, even though I guess they do that because books like this people might not have read. But I'm gonna hold on to these because I have read or received this book for Christmas. A little close up for y'all. Ooh, I already know I'm gonna like this. Is this a washcloth? It says, my favorite game is called How Many Chapters Can I Read in One Night? Oh, I'm gonna look at the spoiler card because I need to see if this is a washcloth. Bookish microfiber cloth, yeah. Literally on my wish list. I wanted cute washcloths, so like, are they listening to me? Perfect, I knew this box was for me. Love that. And this, okay, I know I just roasted Throne of Glass, but this is the one acceptable thing I'll take from it. This is a pin. It's a silhouette of Aelin and it says fire breathing bitch queen, which is actually something that I love. Like I think that's so cute. Maybe I'm a throne of glass stand even though I unhauled the series, but I actually really like that quote. And something that Fairy Loot has been doing is putting in these tarot cards. And just by the appearance, I think this looks like Helen and Elias from, what's that series? Torch against, the, what's the first one called? Ember in the Ashes? It is! Characters based on Ember in the Ashes. Who am I? I am so talented. Oh my gosh, there's two books in here. No wonder I didn't recognize it. Whoa, this is an exclusive arc that was printed for Fairy Loot. That's crazy. This is from Source Books, and this one's called Wicked As You Wish by Ren Chupeco. The little blurb I see on here says, this is about found family, modern day magic. Right off the bat, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. This is a world where there was like a magical kingdom, but there was a queen that caused its citizens to suffer, and now they're all refugees in a world without magic, and now they are in Arizona. So it's like a magical world that parallels the real world, I guess. I don't like books 
looks like that. Or at least if I do, they walk a very thin line. Urban fantasy, I guess, it's it walks a really thin line for me because it often comes off as corny. Because there's real world elements to it, it makes the magic of it less believable. I either want to be immersed in it fully or I just want it to be strict contemporary. So I'll probably hang on to this and see if there's good reviews. When does it come out? March 2020. I don't know how I feel about this, but again, if other people like it, then I'll give it a try. So there's a pack of pencils that are Game of Thrones themed. They say things like winter's coming, growing strong. I can't read the other two. I've read the first Game of Thrones book, not a huge fan, but still I'll, I'll use some pencils. That's pretty useful. Okay, and then the book they send is in a little pouch like this that says happy reading on the back. That's so precious. Part of me wishes these came more than once a month just because they're so cute, but I know I would just be receiving way too many books I could actually read. And what is this? book. There's not that many releases around like winter time so I feel like this wasn't that great of a time to subscribe because I don't think I'll have heard of any of these but okay so I've got a bookmark for the December box, a little note from the author, uh, it looks like some fan art with an author note on the back, fairy scoop. Oh so this is just from the company about exclusive stuff. Oh next month's theme is on here so I'll look at that later but this book is called Eight Will Fall, never heard of it. Looks a little Star Warsy, so I'm a little nervous. Ooh, it's signed. Okay, fairy loot. I mean, it's really cool looking so far. So this is about a 17 year old named Larkin who is an empath, which means she was born with the ability to sense others' emotions, hence the word empath. She can also cipher them to either conjure them or destroy them, so that's cool. But the place she lives in, magic is illegal. She's been suppressed with metals that will tamper her powers. But then an ancient evil starts wreaking havoc on the kingdom and so Larkin and seven other outlaws have to save the kingdom so they use forbidden magic to go into like the underbelly of the city and solve all the problems happening and she's working with a notorious felon named Amius and then the more it goes on the more they realize that like oh these eight people were kind of chosen for a reason so this is one of those books that has like a group of characters all working together to do something and they're like all these misfit underdog characters if you will i guess that that's why this is called defying the odds i didn't look under the book jacket oh <gasps> I, I should have oh my gosh i forgot fairy loot does this they have exclusive art under the cover oh okay wait i'm reading this tomorrow <laughs> I wasn't sold immediately based off that synopsis, but if this is what our characters are looking like, hello, they're holding hands. Ugh. So I think the great thing about this box is even if you've never heard of a book or you're not sure if you'll like it, they give you the art that will convince you to want to read it. And just looking at this author bio, she is gorgeous. She has a master's in creative writing. Incredible. Now I want to read some of the stuff that went along with this. Oh, this is like giving me chills. This is her author note about how this book was born. I think kind of going along with that theme of defying the odds. And it says, Larkin taught me the same lesson she herself learned within The Reach. I thought that was the book title. Maybe it's the friend group she's in. There's no courage without fear. Also, there's a little note for the arc that I got. This says, in 2010, I quit my job, sat down and wrote about a Filipino teen who waged war against the Snow Queen. That just gave this book a little preface about like, she loves comedy, so she hopes we like this book for its personality. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, and then this is the little card about here's the scoop. So there's an author interview in here. I'll probably read that. Oh, this is an exclusive copy. Okay, see, no wonder. So. The the original one is blue and this one's red. There's artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket. There's embossing on the hardcover. I don't know what that means. I think it means that there's like a, a little jumping guy right there. And then it's signed by the author. So like you get so much exclusive stuff when you get fairy loot books. I love that. And then they do a read along for every book that they do. And then next month's theme, I'm excited just looking at this. This is moon and stars. So many of the items in the box are fandom neutral, but you can also expect items from Oscar Wilde, Illuminae, and even the darkest stars. Our featured book of the month is a lush tapestry of magic, romance, and revolution, drawing inspiration from Bolivian politics. The edition that we are featuring will have an exclusive cover, artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket, embossing, and it will be signed. So I think every book almost um, has those four things. Some of them have sprayed edges. That is so 
cool. I know I got this box for free. I'm trying not to oversell it to you guys. But really I set out to pay for this with my own money and even though I went from never hearing of this book to being like, I don't know if I'll like it. This box is just so cool. That's why I picked it. So massive shout out to Fairy Loot for letting me have a box for free. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of most excited about the towel and the pen even though I've barely even like thrown a glass. Come on, fire breathing bitch queen. That's me. I would give that like a four out of five stars. I cannot wait to get more boxes and I'm so upset that I missed all my favorite books from last year. I should have subscribed earlier. Would you care to know how spoiled my cats are? The only cat food flavor I have left for them is the trout and salmon, but they only like the salmon and chicken, so they haven't been eating this one. So I had to go back to PetSmart and I bought these puree packets of salmon and chicken and it's like literally like just liquid. It looks nasty, but I put that in their food and mix it up. So now hopefully these divas will eat the other flavor. So let's see, are y'all gonna eat? Are you gonna eat? Did I trick you? I think so. Good kittens. I can't believe that worked. Okay, I've been working all day to edit a two hour video. I just called my parents to see if they were even coming over tonight. They said no, so I'm gonna clean anyway because I know if I don't, my house will keep looking like this. <laughs> so here's like a little aesthetic cleanup shot. had to come outside and show you. Look how beautiful the sky is. So nice. Wow. Camera's done charging and I did not make any progress other than cleaning four pots. <laughs> Let's clean my desk, shall we? And we're a bit cleaner. I have one question for y'all. Where do you store your receipts? I have a bag of receipts, but it doesn't work well and I want them to be sorted so I can look back at if I need to return something or if I need to keep records of them. Like, how do you do that? Do you get a shoebox? Do they sell receipt sorters? Am I just overthinking it? Let me know. I'm going to make dinner right now and prep some fruit. My hair is a grease ball right now, I apologize. But let me get this water on the stove then I'll get talking. I got a topic. And yeah, it's 9 p.m. and I haven't eaten. Mind your business. I love that noise my sink makes. I'm gonna dice some strawberries while we talk. Basically, tonight I saw a tweet, and the person who tweeted this is probably gonna watch this video. So I wanna say up front, this is not a call out post. I'm not mad at this person. I'm not trying to put them on blast, <laughs> but I would like to talk about it. So I saw a tweet that was a screenshot of this person's video where a person had commented, hey, your lighting in this video looks really off. Try and find a lighting source that's X, Y, Z. I forgot what they said, but they basically just said like, hey, constructive criticism, your lighting could be better. In this book too, just said like, oh thanks, you know, I'll do what I want. I didn't really ask for your opinion. More or less to that degree. Not overly rude. I'm not saying you shouldn't respond like that if you get unsolicited advice. But then they screenshot it and put it on Twitter and said something like, oh, someone gave me advice that I didn't want or something like that. But this kind of made me think of my video I posted a couple weeks, days ago where I was talking about why guru gossip exists. And I basically said like, I think it makes sense that a booktube guru gossip exists because we don't really have a culture on booktube where we can criticize each other. And then seeing this screenshot kind of reinforced <laughs> 
that feeling. So I'm not trying to make an example out of this person. I just think it was like a tweet that I saw at the right time to make me be like, hey, I was just talking about that. I would love comments being like, hey, your voice in this video was weird. Your audio here was weird. Your lighting here was weird. Because I feel like that helps me grow as a YouTuber. Like this is my apartment's lighting and this is what I use. I don't own a ring light. If enough people comment and tell me like, hey, I didn't enjoy your lighting, I'd try and invest in fixing that because oh, my YouTube is partially a job at this point. And I get if you're doing YouTube for fun, you don't want to hear constructive criticism because you're doing what you're doing and that's fine. Oh my God, it's boiling. Okay, I'm turning it down. I'm gonna have to cook ravioli real fast. This is the butternut squash ravioli from Trader Joe's and it slaps so hard. I didn't even salt the water. And the reason why I don't want to lay a blanket statement on this and be like, all booktubers should accept criticism is because there's so many exceptions. And there's people who aren't doing YouTube for money. There's people who don't have the access to improve their videos. And I'm not saying that you should listen to people that say like, you're ugly, fix your eyebrows. Dumb comments like that, I get. But seeing the comment that this person left, it was so civil and so well-intentioned and to see it brushed off is what really stuck out to me. And I know even me, when I get comments telling me I should do things differently or I said something wrong, like my first instinct is to like recoil and be like, no, I meant what I said and stick behind that. So it's even an impulse that I'm having to navigate to be like, you should listen to people instead of automatically assuming you're right. But then I guess the rejection of people telling you you can be better is what leads to forums like her gossip where they do the constructive criticism rather than other members of our community that might be more trusted and they're not anonymous. And then on Guru Gossip it feels like an attack because it is anonymous and it is people who don't like you whereas I feel like criticism in your comments section or in your Twitter DMs is from people who care about you and people who watch your videos. I don't know what the point of this clip is. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about this after seeing an example of it. If you're a booktuber, look again at some comments you get. Who's to say? They might just be terrible people and I'm encouraging you to risk your mental health. I cut all my straws and my bloobs. I'm going to make some spinach salad. I hope I didn't come across like a throbbing asshole during this clip, but it's just what I'd be thinking. I would love to be able to comment on some people's videos and be like, hey, you should do X, Y, Z. Not in like a rude way, but in a, I think you'd be better off if you did this way. And maybe some booktubers should clarify whether they're willing to hear that or not. My mind is just racing. I don't know what to say about this or like what the call to action is. And again, no tea, no shade to the person who tweeted this because I still love them to death and I'm like not upset about it at all. It just triggered that itch. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have pasta now. Have a wonderful night. <laughs> when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a bore. It looks nasty. Will it taste good though? Yes. The moral of this story is go buy the butternut squash ravioli from Trader Joe's. <laughs> I took my shirt off because I spilled balsamic vinegar on it. Uh, mind your business. But I decided I want to take a bath. I don't know why that was so aggressive. I've been putting off reading this for like 24 hours and I don't know why I'm putting it off because it just took a turn so I want to finish it. Also, it made me emo so I'm ready to cry. I'm gonna make me a nice warm bath. I'm gonna put a candle next to it. I'm gonna take the hair out of my drain because <laughs> I'm nasty. And let's see if I can finish this book tonight. Okay, finished with my bath. I got a little bit of the ways in. I get kind of distracted from bathing because you know, bathing. But I got to page 335. I've got about 70 pages till the end, which I can read in like an hour and a half. I'm gonna blow dry my hair because I love how this works. Probably get settled on the couch with some hot chocolate or tea and finish off my book. So this is like soaking wet to blow dried and like blown out slash straightened. This will take like 15 more minutes so I'll see you when I'm done. This didn't come out quite as good as yesterday. It's actually a lot worse. I split it into bigger sections and so I didn't get it as thoroughly so now it just kind of looks like I blow dried it. But I'm too tired and sweaty to redo it. I'll probably just run a straightener through it tomorrow morning. Hello. But as I said, I wanna sit on my fucking couch and drink hot cocoa. So I'm getting my jammies out right now. Talk to you in a bit. <laughs> I 
I finished it. Collect myself real quick. It's pretty good. <laughs> this whole book, I feel like it's been like one step up from a Lifetime movie. Like, not quite as cheesy, but just a little bit cookie cutter, just a little bit. I hate this title, but like kind of a women's fiction chiclet type deal where it's like her marriage is falling apart. She and this guy are star-crossed lovers, but they can't be together, it's forbidden. So in that way, I think it's a little bit typical. I still really enjoyed the characters. It made me emotional in the end. One thing that I really wasn't a fan of was that this book takes place over nine years and a lot of times it will like abruptly jump to new timelines and then it will just throw some information at you like, hey, by the way, this person's pregnant now. Hey, by the way, this person's dead now. So I feel like those skips just make you lose part of the story and it makes it less fleshed out. But I think this is just an easy book to read because you know how it's gonna end. <laughs> the writing was fine. Like nothing's bad about this book. It's like a solid four star, enjoyable book that grabs your feelings, but it wasn't like, the most perfect thing I've read, envious couple, love them so much. There's this quote from toward the end of the book that I really liked. I'm holding the page open so I can put a tab on it when I go back to my bedroom, but it says, hello, light bulb, I was about to talk. It's strange, but you never stop caring about someone even if you don't want to be with them anymore. I don't know, it sounds simple out loud, but that quote just like jumped out at me. So I think I'm gonna give that book four stars. It's not steamy whatsoever, so don't read this if you're just looking for like smut. I would say it's like a Lifetime movie, but better. It has the plot of a Lifetime movie, but with characters that have more realness to them. I guess that's the way I would describe it. Yay, I finished a book! I read like two books in December because I've been so busy, so I need to make up for that. Let's go see what I should start right now, even though it's after midnight and mama should be sleeping. <gasps> it's my baby! Is she sleeping? Hi, honey. Are you sleeping? My good girl. So there's a book I have in mind that I want to start. So I have an arc of A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely and I'm not like urgently wanting to read this, but Bridget is coming to North Texas the day this comes out or like January 9th or something like that, which gives me a little bit to read it, but I'm not convinced I'm not gonna take a hot second to get through this. So I'm gonna start this just so I can give myself enough time to read it before I meet her because I've lent this to a friend and there's a bunch of sticky tabs in it and nothing will be worse than giving this to her to sign and she's like, oh, are these all the parts you liked? And I have to sit there like, ha ha ha, I didn't do that. So I wanna read it. And I did like the first book and this follows a character who I think is really interesting. So if you don't know, A Curse So Dark and Lonely is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I gave it like four stars. I thought it was really enjoyable. The only hang up I had is that it's one of those urban fantasy books where there's our universe and then there's the fantasy universe and you can sort of go between them fluidly. And I just, that messes with my head because it makes the magic seem unrealistic if it's like going between our world and that. But anyway, this is the companion novel that follows Grey, who is the prince's in book one, like attendant his guard. I know that A Curse of Dark and Lonely ended with a cliffhanger that leads into this book, but I've kind of forgotten what that is, so I think I'll just have to dive back into this and get reacquainted with it, and then we'll be good to go. So I'm not really tired. Usually I conk out at 11, but it's far past that, and I'm still feeling fine. I'm gonna give this a shot. It's not that wintry or Christmassy, but it's one I wanna get knocked out before I go and meet the author. This is the latest I've stayed awake in a long time. I've been editing and tootling around, but I did start the book I said I would. I am now 39 pages into A Heart So Fierce and Broken, so it's kind of laying the groundwork. Oh, hi. So this does pick up where the last one leaves off, and it gives you a good explanation of where we left off, what we're doing now. Ma'am, 
This is a Wendy's. But the one thing I will say is that I thought this was a companion novel following a different character, but it's actually a sequel. It's a continuation. However, it is expanded the amount of points of view that are in it. So now there's like four characters so far who are getting a dedicated point of view, which I'm not having issues with yet. So, so far so good. I kind of wish I had the audiobook for it, but it's not even out yet, so I'm not going to complain. Also, side no, I'm sleeping on the couch tonight because when I assembled my bed with my dad, we took a shortcut and we were like, we don't need to put nails in that. It'll be fine. And tonight it broke. And I don't want to start hammering at like 10 p.m. when it happened. And my couch is pretty comfortable. <laughs> So I'm just gonna take a night on the couch. But my book is good. I'm just really tired and I wanna go to bed. <sighs> so I started this vlog at 3 p.m. yesterday. So I think I'll keep this going for like 24 hours. I don't know if I'll be waking up at 9 a.m. or at 1 p.m. But I'll just keep you in the loop. I'll take you with me for a couple days. Okay, I'm seriously so tired. I need to go to sleep. I don't know why I'm up this early. See you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. I'm not loving my eye makeup. I used a lot of the purples out of this Frozen 2 palette, but I feel like I just have bruised eyeballs. My mother wants me to meet my family for lunch. One thing I was doing this morning is going through the list that Obama released of his favorite books of 2019. I've only heard of one of them, normal people, what's it called? The Sally whatever, but clearly I don't know it. There's a lot of new books I've never heard of, so I wanted to go through them and add them to my TBR if I'm interested. And things like that, they're all like hard hitting literary fiction, and it's also, dare I say, adult. Whenever I add books like that to my TBR, it's kind of like wishful thinking. Like, I would love to read that and get out of it what Obama got out of it, but I don't wanna read it and buy it and then just be bored and be like, I didn't get it. I'm adding those books to my TBR today, I'm sure, in two years when they're still on my TBR and I have not even looked at them, I'll probably remove it. But that's been my morning. How was yours? Good to hear. Hello. I got tacos with my family and then we walked around a shopping center a little bit. I saw a teacher that I had in high school, my freshman year of high school speech teacher. We were just browsing a store and I heard Whitney and I turned around and it was my teacher who had literally have not had a class with in eight years and she knew who I was and I was like, what? Hi! When you make a good impression, <laughs> when teachers love you. And so that was wild. I did buy something from Barnes and Noble. I didn't get any books because let's be real, I need to go on a 2020 book ban. <laughs> but these were all laid out on a table and this was the last one of this kind. I'll just show you. Barnes and Noble makes these book pouches. Well, I guess they're just pouches. You can't fit a book in here. But they're bookish themed and they're like little canvas bags. It has Barnes and Noble on the back. And this one says, baby got books. And it was the last one of this kind. There were a couple other ones that I really wanted. There was one that said like, I like big books and I cannot lie. It was 10 bucks, which is kind of steep, but I love the branding on it. And I can put like highlighters and sticky tabs and I can have this as like a book annotating kit that I can either put in my purse or keep in my nightstand. So I love to use them for that. And then my mom got me a belated Christmas present. You might've seen in my lap, oh being blinded. My last video, I hauled one of these, but my mom got me this set of Woodwick candles. These are the candles that crackle when you burn them, and it's so atmospheric to read to. It feels like you're in a cauldron room, like in Harry Potter. I don't even know if that's a thing, and people laugh when I say that. Is that cauldron room like a sexy signal for something? Like, the cauldron room. I don't know, but this is like a little sampler kit. It has three different scents in it. I've already smelled vanilla beans, so I'll have to check out the other two, but it comes with a little candle holder, and it's gonna be so cute and it's gonna make noises. I love these so much. I have a couple hours to myself now. My family um, is taking my sister and her boyfriend to like go explore our old hometown and I was like, I don't wanna do that, <laughs> I'll cry. But my sister really wants to show him my apartment so I have to go and finish cleaning it. Ah, oh, there it is. Take a shot, I talked about cleaning. We need to make like a game out of this. Like every time I talk about cleaning, I have to buy someone something from their wish list or something. <laughs> I just feel ridiculous talking about it constantly. It's like, shut up. I'm gonna go upstairs and go clean and my camera needs to charge, so let's go do that. Also, can we talk about the hot chocolate that I got today at Starbucks? I got hot chocolate with almond milk and it was 
so good. I'm usually like whatever about Starbucks hot chocolate, but for some reason that almond milk made it like God tier hot chocolate. So I recommend that or just make some yourself for like $2 cheaper. Let's go see my kittens. Let's go bring back summer. I love you if you got that reference. So update, I got bamboozled into going to the grocery store with my mom. This eyeshadow makes me look like I have a black eye. Are you serious? I was sweating so hard today, but made my hair curl. Who can relate? Woo. So I'm going to my parents' house because I want a free dinner and we're gonna play card games. So I'm going to mom and dad's house. Everyone's looking at me. Is it not normal to vlog in a grocery store? I'm just a wee woman trying to make a living. It's midnight, I'm about to get home from my parents' house. Hope you'll have a wonderful day.